Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, you know, we're going to have, first of all, it's nice to be in Lekki Ch- um, Bagada Church today. You know, you know and, and I told them in the first service, thank you for being able to release me, you know, just to be able to strengthen the other churches and to do NLP because there's just so much I can do in one person. So if I'm here, I can be there. But I'm grateful for our pastor, you know, that is just helping us do an amazing work, Pastor Dyer. I'm thankful for Pastor Dijilawal also. Pastor Dijilawal, let's, let's appreciate him doing amazing, amazing work, you know. And of course, for Harvesters Yaba that is starting, which is also Pastor Lumide, you know. Pastor Lumide, come, come. I don't know if you're from Yaba, that area, you want to, you want to see Pastor Lumide. I want to thank God for all of our leaders. You know, I can, I, I can, you know, Pastor Ben is there, so, you know, Pastor Lumide, wonderful, wonderful. So Harvesters Yaba is starting over in Yaba. You need to take a picture with him. Good day. It's nice to see you, my brother. Really nice. Is that your wife beside you? Yes, it's, it's nice. It's nice. I, you know, I've not been able to see her in a long time. Choir, thank you. You know, thank you. Thank you. Where's Ade? Is it there? He's moving around like he always moves around. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Choir, thank you for being such a blessing. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the media crew, all of the things they're doing, all of you online. It's really nice to just be able to connect. Let's turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 24, verse 49. It says, and behold, I send you the promise of my father. It says, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. So this month we're talking about the Holy Spirit. So it says, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. He says, but tarry. Now, this is what it says. It says, tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And one of the big questions I've been asking all through the service today is this. How come Jesus put so much priority on the ministry of the Holy Spirit? He so prioritized it, he told the apostles, he says, don't even try to go anywhere. He says, I have things for you to do, but don't even attempt to go anywhere until you receive the Holy Spirit. I said, that is big because Jesus had assignment for them to do. But now he says, don't do anything except receive the Holy Spirit. The same thing when you look through the Bible. Elisha, Elisha, Elisha was going to receive from Elijah. Elijah gave him a blank check. He says, what do you want? I thought Elisha was going to tell him, give me authority, give me this, give me that. The only thing Elisha asked him is this, a double portion of your spirit. Why was it so important to them? Why was it so important to them? David, David was one that surprised me the most because David was not a pastor. He was not an evangelist. He was not an apostle. He was a king. Then David said in Psalm 51 verse 11, David said this. He said, cast me not away from your presence. He says, please take everything, but do not take the Holy Spirit from me. How like, my God, what does this king know about the Holy Spirit that is so desperate? I thought as a king, you want political power. You want rulership. You want external kingdom. You want wealth. But David said, that's not what I want. The only thing I want is this, Psalm 51 verse 11. He says, cast me not away from your presence. He says, take not the Holy Spirit away from me. He says, please do not take the Holy Ghost from me. Why? What, what did they know? The Bible says that and Moses said in Exodus chapter 33 verse 15, what did Moses say? Moses said this. He says that if you will not go with us, we will not go anywhere. Moses said, we will remain slaves in Egypt if you will not go with us. It's amazing. Why, why were they so, why did they prioritize the ministry of the Holy Spirit so much? Is, it, is, it, is there something they know that we don't know today? Because I understand the prophets, but how do you explain? How do you explain a king? How do you explain a businessman that says that, hey, Lord, if there's nothing I want more than the Holy Spirit, how do you explain it? Maybe there's something they know about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Oh, well, not wait today. Because when you talk about the Holy Spirit, all the men think about that's something that, you know, that's something of the women. And all of us think about shaking and falling. And those are wonderful, but that's not the Holy Ghost. Oh, wow. What does the Holy Ghost do? Jesus, this is the most amazing one. The Bible says that before Jesus Christ received the Holy Spirit, he could do no miracle. Then one day, 
he stepped into river Jordan and the Bible says all of a sudden it came out the Spirit of God descended upon him and the first thing he did was this he took water and turned it to wine that's what the Holy Ghost does what is water to wine God will take your two million naira business turn it to two hundred thousand naira two hundred million naira business because God knows how to take the ordinary and make it supernatural make it extraordinary that's what the Holy Ghost does God takes the womb the doctor says cannot have a child and that same womb is water and God breathes upon it and that womb begins to carry twins I, I, I got a testimony this week already next level. I don't know what you're doing next level. If you've not attended next level before, this week you need to attend next level. The reason why that we're fasting Monday, Tuesday, th- um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and the team is let grace speak for me. I'm not just asking you to attend. I'm asking you to make sure that five persons will join you. And this testimony came in, in next level. And this lady said, the doctor said my two tubes were blocked. He said, they told me categorically in several hospital that you will not be able to have blocked. He said, Pastor, I came to next level. He said, I prayed. You mentioned my case. I went back to the same doctors. The same doctor that said the tubes were blocked said, we don't know what happened. The tubes are open. The tubes are fine. Weeks after, they said, I'm pregnant. Why? The Holy Ghost knows how to take ordinary and makes it extraordinary. He knows how to take that small shop in the corner of Antony and make it a mall. The Holy Ghost knows how to take something small and blow it it into a large thing. That's what the Holy Ghost does. No wonder, no wonder says David said, if you'd like, take everything but something you should not take. Take not your spirit away from me. Because whatever I've lost, if the spirit is with me, I can gain it back. You run a business, you've been trying, you have this, you have this business, you can't cross a 10 million bar, 10 million air barrier. The Holy Ghost can take the 10 million barrier and move it to a hundred million. One lady sent me a testimony. He said, I don't know how God answers your prayer. I don't know the deal you have with God. He said, but I'm the kind of person that I've been trying to find people to marry. He said, in the last three, four years, the challenge that nobody has even looked my way. He said, I joined the next level prayers. He said, the amazing thing that happened is this. He said, the amount of guys that come my way right now and are interested. He said, I'm just wondering what changed. The Holy Spirit knows how to make that happen. Isaiah 32 verse 15. Look at what the Holy Ghost does. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 15. Oh, glory to God. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 15. Oh, glory to God. See what the Bible says. Let's read together. I want to go. It says, until the spirit be poured out from on high. What will happen? It says, it says, when the spirit is poured out, the wilderness. Some people say, I'm stuck. All you need is a touch. You know, you look at, you look at your life. You're like, I'm stuck. Maybe the best is to travel. I don't know why I can't get married. I don't know why I'm stuck in my career. I don't know why my marriage is like this. I don't know why my job is like that. And you say all of this. He says, hey, wait. He says, when the Spirit is poured out, he said, the wilderness, listen to me, this, the Holy Spirit is not just for pastors. If you have been experiencing wilderness in your business, you've been experiencing wilderness in your finances, he said, when the Spirit is poured out, the wilderness will become what? A fruitful place. Oh! Oh! When there was no result, there will be too much results. When there was stagnation, it will be onward progress, forward motion, forward motion. Somebody say amen. amen. He said, When the spirit is poured out, he said, The wilderness. Someone said, I don't know why I'm not married. Hey, let the spirit be poured out. All the people that have not noticed start not seeing you. He said, The wilderness will become what? A fruitful place. Then he said something powerful. He said, The fruitful field. What's a fruitful field? You're doing well. God says you can do better. <laughs> hallelujah you're doing well god says what you can do better he said the fruitful field shall become a jungle of results you know what a forest is a forest is that there's so much result you step here is result you step here is result you have to you're cutting through results he says he says that's what it is i know you are doing better but i know you're doing well but there's always a better oh my god 
I know the best is doing well. One lady, one lady I, I met her, I met her yes, um, on Friday, next level prayer, after the prayer. And she walked up to me and said, I just want to let you know God answers prayers. I said, what do you mean? He said, I prayed for a job. I got the job. Three months after, I, I wrote my letter of congratulation. I got a promotion. Six months after, I got another promotion. It doesn't happen like this. I said, God is moving from fruitful to forest. You know, when something is fruitful, that's their result. When it's forest, it's a jungle. Have you seen going to a jungle before? They, they literally have to cut their way because it's blocked. God says, I will fill you with so much result, it will be blocking you right, left, and center. You will have to be cutting your way and cutting your way and cutting your way. Listen to me if you believe you receive this one. The things that are not working will begin to work. Where you have not received approvals, where you have not been noticed, the veil has been removed. You are stepping into a season of global announcement. Of global announcement. Of global announcement. In the name of Jesus. Hey, said I say I am stepping into a season of global announcement. He said, when the Spirit is poured out. So then, where is the Holy Spirit? The, the mistake we make is that we, we equate the simile of the Spirit to the Spirit. So, I can say something like, um, Pastor, you walked on the stage like a worship. That does not mean Pastor is a worship. I only use that to describe what a behavior. I can look at I can look at one of our music staff and be like, oh, you know, maybe I look at maybe Grace or Sarah and say, wow, you look so chewable. It doesn't mean I can chew her physically. But so when you see her and you're like, oh, when are they going to chew you? No. But I'm just it's a it's what it's a figure of speech. It's a simile. The thing with Christian is this. Most of us have equated the Holy Spirit with simile. And the simile describes an attitude, describes a behavior. So someone says, the Holy Spirit is fire. He is not fire. Someone says, the Holy Spirit is wind. He is not wind. Because those things are inanimate objects. They say the Holy Spirit is a dove. How can you reduce the Holy, Holy Ghost to an animal? Who is the Holy Ghost? Let's look at that. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, in verse 1. The Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as what? Of a rushing. Look at it. There came a sound of heaven as what? Was he a rushing mighty wind or like a rushing mighty wind? As is also like. It says, There was a sound. And the best thing we could compare it to was what? It was a rushing mighty wind. Was it a wind? No. Was it the wind? No. It was as of a rushing. Listen to me. He didn't even say it was wind. He was talking about the rush. It was, a, it was, a, it was quite rapid. He was using the rushing wind to describe what they noticed about the manifestation of the spirits as of a mighty rushing wind but people say the holy ghost is wind he's not wind then look at verse look at verse 3 the bible says and they appeared unto them what cloven tongues as of what but they said there's holy ghost fire there's no fire here there's no fire in the scripture he said what was what cloven tongues like as of fire if i look at the choir and said mrs brother mercy his fire is she fire no there's something i'm describing he didn't say the holy ghost is fire he said what appeared was what as like of fire the nature it was combustive it was it was flammable because the thing is this if you keep thinking of the holy ghost as wind and kingdom of the Holy Ghost as flood and water and all those things, you will not be able to relate to the Holy Spirit. I'll give you a good example. I have a nice phone. 
And my son would take my phone and play games. And because that's all he thinks the phone is for, he enjoys this game. But sometimes he wants to buy a computer game. He wants to buy this thing. He doesn't realize that my phone can pay his bills. The moment he realizes my phone can pay his bills, we have to password that area also. Why? The limit of what he knows about the Holy Ghost is the function of the Holy Ghost in his life. So, if all you know about the Holy Ghost is wind, all you see that, you see, I felt, I felt it. But that doesn't change your life. Oh, fire. I, I felt that noise. That's change. what changes your life. So, my son takes the phone and he only sees his games. He's wondering what I do on the phone all the time. He doesn't understand there's a lot to do on the phone. A lot of Christians, when you see the Holy Ghost, how they say that, oh, they'll shake, shake, shake and fall. Those are manifestations. That's not who he is. Someone said the Holy Ghost is dove. The Holy Ghost is not dove. John chapter 1 verse 32. John chapter 1 verse 32. Let's look at that quickly. John chapter 1 verse 32. <sighs> because some of you even have all these pictures where they will put a white dove and say that's the Holy Spirit. See, I don't even know what... See, although a lot of people do it, it doesn't make it right. The Holy Ghost is not a dove. In fact, the Holy Ghost was not even compared to a dove. So I said, huh? It wasn't. I will show you what it was compared to. John chapter 1 verse 32. The Bible says this. And John bore record and said, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven. Like what? What it compared was this. It was not compared the Holy Spirit to the dove. It said the descent of the Holy Spirit was like what? A dove. Why? A dove is gentle. He said the Holy Ghost came gently on Jesus. He was, uh, because I saw him descending like, not, not as a dove, like. Because how does a dove descend? A dove descends gently. He said the Holy Spirit came gently. On the day of Pentecost, he came like a rushing mighty wind. How come we not equate him to a dove? So that's why when businessmen hear about the Holy Ghost, they say, what do I need the wind for? Because it's wind. <laughs> ah, bro, you need to know the Holy Ghost. Who is the Holy Ghost? Number one, the Holy Ghost is a person. Who? Something the Holy Ghost is a person. Did you remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira? The Bible says this, when they lied to Peter, what did Peter say? Peter said, Acts chapter 5, I believe, Peter said, why have you chosen the heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? If it's wind, you don't lie to wind. You lie to a person. Then Ephesians 4 says, grieve not the Holy Ghost. He has emotions. He says, oh, Holy Ghost goes, oh, he grieve not. He has emotions. Only persons have emotions. Then 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says, The Spirit searches all things, yet the things th th of God. He has a will, he has intellect, he can think, he can search. He's a person. The Holy Ghost is a person. But not just is the Holy Ghost a person. The Holy Ghost is not just a person. The Holy Spirit is God. So I said, oh, that's where the problem is. Because why is it good for the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is a person? If you know the Holy Spirit is a person, you will not be thinking all the time, film the Holy Ghost, film the Holy Ghost. You will be praying more superior prayers. Can I know the Holy Spirit deeper? Can I fellowship with the Holy Spirit deeper? You know why? The, see, there are two kinds of people. The one that really is connected to someone will enjoy than the one that comes to collect gifts. Yes or no? Yeah. Once you're truly connected to the Holy Spirit, there'll be more you enjoy. There are many Christians that just want the gifts, the power the feeling that's good but the deep people know that's not how we get it have you seen a guy that has a girlfriend that every time they see she needs something every month there's a you need an iphone then the next month you need a battery then you need a shoe you need a bag the guy is gonna after some time walk away because he knows that this is not a relationship if it's one it's very parasitic in nature what everybody wants a relationship where you are given and yet you're receiving and that's what the Holy Ghost forms for you. That's what the Bible says. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And what? The communion of the Holy Spirit. What does the communion of the Holy Ghost do for you? Number one. Assurance. Ah. 
Para makumi nehesa vekona. Let me tell you what assurance is. Um, where's Chef? Yeah, come, 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 come. I'm not sure he's tall enough. I want it on to huge, lanky. Who is that? David, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Junior, come stay here. If I'm facing a business battle, and this is the Holy Spirit, we've been having conversations. Let's come closer. This is the Holy Spirit, we've been having conversations. And, you know, he knows them, and, and, and he goes, I'm always with you. When I'm facing the business battle, business battle, come. This is my open business battle. Let's go and face him. When I go, everybody wonders why I'm so bold. I'm so bold because I'm in fellowship with someone bigger than me. When you know the Holy Spirit and you get a negative report, the negative report is here. The reason you don't fear is this. Whatever the report says, the one that can change the report is with you. Because he's a person. Because he's a person. Mary says, how will I get pregnant? He said, the power of the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. Question, how can this guy, thank you, let me just, thank you, how can this guy, he can make me afraid, maybe because I don't have muscles, he can make me afraid, but how can the two of us want to come at this guy and I'll be afraid? The reason why you're afraid you never have a child, you don't know the Holy Ghost. The reason why you're afraid you never get married, you don't know the Holy Ghost. The reason why you're afraid that you never have the bridge, you know the Holy Ghost. When you know the Holy Ghost, his presence gives you assurance. Thank you. So the Holy Spirit is God. Psalm 139 verse 7 says something very powerful. He describes the Holy Spirit as the omnipresent that is everywhere at the same time and that's a quality that only god has even satan is not omnipresent satan is if satan is in texas he can be in san antonio if satan is in texas he can be in canada if how do i know john chapter one god asked satan where are you he says i'm coming from going through and through the earth he has to go through and through to monitor things but god doesn't go through and through god is everywhere at every point at every time that's not good enough when you say that god is omnipresent it's not just at everywhere right now. God is in the past. God is in the future. Right now, God is in creation. Right now, God is in eternity. Right now, God is here. So say, how is that possible? Because the concept of time is inside God. <laughs> Think about it like a pregnant woman. When you say, where is the baby's hand? It's inside. Where is like Inside. Babies eat here, inside. Everything is inside. Why? The whole of the baby is inside God. The whole of time and future and past, everything is in God. So everything, God is the one that envelopes it. That's why the Bible says, does say, in the beginning God was made. In the beginning was God. The beginning met him. Because the beginning began inside him. Praise God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Psalm 139 verse 7 to 8. Let's read Psalm 139, verse 78 quickly. This is what the Bible says. It says, Where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I fit from your presence? Verse 8. It says, it says, If I go to the heavens, it says, The Holy Spirit is everywhere. Someone says, The Holy Spirit is God. So, how many gods do we have? We have God, if I have one God, God, if I have two God, God, if I have three God. We don't serve three gods, we serve one God. Can I have my water and my eyes? Just a small water, I don't want just one. Where's the eyes? Do I have it? Okay, I thought you had it. Thank you. What is this? Is it water? If I put this water in the fridge, what does it become? Ice, yes or no? Is ice water? Yes or no? Ice is water that is what's frozen. If I boil it, it turns into vapor. Is vapor water? What does this mean? God the water is water. He becomes solid. We can touch him. God the Holy Spirit. See, God in three forms. So question. Is ice water, is ice block water? 
Why can't you say it's not water? It's still water. It's vapor water. It's still water. So, so what is the difference? This water, I will compare this water to God, the Holy Spirit, dynamic flows. But when it becomes physical that we can touch, Jesus was made flesh. Eyes block. God. What? God the Son. Because just who came in the flesh. But the Father is what nobody has ever seen before. It exists in unapproachable light that no man can approach. Vapor. Do we serve three God? Do we have three water? We only have three water. But they are what? In three states. Solid, liquid, and gas. It's one God in three personalities. Spirit, Jesus, and the Father. Glory to God. I say glory to God. The Holy Spirit is God. And the last thing you want to know is this. The Holy Spirit is the conveyor of God's power. What's the conveyor? The Holy Spirit is a carrier of God's power. The Holy Spirit is a carrier of God's presence. For example, if you say, I feel the presence of God, but God is not, God himself is not here. The Father, I mean, God is here through the Holy Spirit. So when he says, that's why he says, the love of God. What the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. What happens? The love of God. And what? What you experience in fellowship is the work of the Holy Spirit. I feel the presence as the presence of the Holy Ghost. That's his presence. It's the presence of the Holy Ghost. So powerful. I feel his presence. Because the Holy Spirit is a conveyor of God's presence and power. Do you know what? Someone says, and that's why Zechariah chapter 4 says, he says, it's not by power. It's not by might. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is a conveyor. Conveyor means, what would like is for conveyor? I want you to, <laughs> conveyor, this word conveyor, conveyor means transports. When you say the car conveyed me, the car transported me. Conveyor means transmission. Let me give it, where's my, where's my bag again? Where's my bag and perfume? Yeah, where's my bag and perfume? Can you me close that? Yeah. Thank you. If this, if this is who you are, when the Holy Ghost wants to change your life, this is point A. I don't even get to this basket. This is, this is the Holy Ghost, point A. You are in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost wants to change your business. Are you ready? This is the Holy Ghost though. You are inside. It will just carry you. From one millionaire per annum, carry you. Over here. 50 millionaire per annum. So, people will start asking you, how did it happen? You cannot know because you were carried. You can have ideas of some things, but the truth is that you, so when you ask people that are really blessed, when they say it's the grace of God, I know they walked, I know they did their work, but there's a dimension because other people are walking. Other people are also talking, but there's a dimension of, hey, yeah, yeah, like the song that carry me, they go, they go, they go. <laughs> hey, hey, he, he just carried you. Ah, they wonder, but we're all in this oil and gas. But we're all in banking. But we're all in real estate. Why is your own different? I'm carried differently. That's why when they were going through a war, Zachariah said, hey, it's not my power. Because if you were here to get there, there will be some things you want to push. You want to move some things and shake something. He said, uh-uh, you can do it. He said, but this one, not by power. Hey, he said, that movement, not by power. He says, not by mind. He said, by the spirit. It's a carry by the spirit. You go and see the doctor. Doctor said, we can't see you. You can't have a child. Holy Ghost says, okay. You can have a child. Good. Hey. You can't have a child. So this is the point where you can't have a child. This is the point where your child has autism. This is the point where you can't get the approval. This is the point where you can't get your visa. This is the point where you can't get the healing. Doctor.
doctor said it's finished you say okay doctor holy ghost said, let me do my job ah yeah 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 ah yeah 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 what does he do you are inside him he carries you <laughs> he brings you here when you get back to the hospital doctor said what did you do how can you know what you did when you were carried all your mates are saying that hey i mean a lady sent a testimony she said i'm 54 right now i'm engaged first time in my life even me than the pastor i said ah, who married her was it a divorcee or was it a single person i'm thinking how did it happen that's why the bible says that the things of the spirit no man can understand somebody say hallelujah somebody say hallelujah somebody say hallelujah somebody say hallelujah not by power not by might but the spirit of god not by power not by might but the spirit of god glory to god not by power not by might by the spirit of god hey they, they say how will you make that business work not by power not by might. Some people will boast and say, you know, I know the governor. I understand. That's power. Some will say, I had this might. He said, but now he's by the spirit. Why? The Holy Ghost is a carrier. Mary said, sorry, Angelo. How will I get pregnant? <laughs> he said, how will I get pregnant? Angel said, you get pregnant? He said, when the power of God comes upon you. When, see what it says. Luke says, the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And the translation says, the power of God will envelope you. It will, it will swallow you up. It just carry you from barren. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Put you there. Ah, tell your neighbor, let's go. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. I, I don't know where you are today, but you are being transported by the Holy Ghost. You are being transported by the Holy Ghost. You are being transported by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Ah, that business. You look at it again. It was here in January. Look at it there. In July. How did he get a transportation of the spirit? Transportation, conveying of the spirits. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. No wonder all the apostles and the prophets said, We want the spirits. Because if we have it, there will be relocation. Glory to God. Let's read one more scripture and we'll close. Please have your seats. Oh, glory to God. What does the Holy Ghost do with us? So, ah, what does the Holy Ghost do with us? How does he bless us? Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. The Bible says this. It is God that walks in us. This, this is how you receive the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Hey, business people, pay attention. Ha, all of you that want to get married, pay attention. These are, how does it work? It says God walks in us. But to what? Listen, some things you desire is not you. Because the Holy Ghost now stays inside you, it moves you from the inside. It's not even that you hear the voice. You just feel like. He just feel like. And that feeling is the Holy Ghost. I'll give you, I'll give you two testimonies. One of the, um, one brother wanted to get married. Seemed to have some delay. As he was going for the marriage, as he, um, his friend was getting married, the Holy Ghost told him, be kind to the, what they call it, say, be kind to the chief bridesmaid. When he got there, chief bridesmaid was not someone to be kind to. But remember what the Holy Ghost said. Long and short, that channel became the way he met his wife and got married. How does that apply to you? You can be going, and the Holy Ghost, when you get to church, anywhere the usher sits, you sit down there. All of a sudden, you say, okay. You know, I just said, this way. You say, oh God, that's not where I like to sit. I, I'll be blocked by the camera. I want to sit here. But you now sat down there. Well, you now sat down because you heard the voice. You're now wondering, why am I not here? Because on your right and your left, you can't see why the Holy Ghost told you to come here. You know why God does that? 
Because if you can see why God says you do something, you will not do it by faith. You will do it by sense. Two of us. If as you sat down right there, you saw the commission of finance, when you say, ah, thank God, oh, no wonder. You, you, you will do it. But once you got there, it will not make sense. But, and, and, God, and you say, okay. Meanwhile, the guy was chatting. Meanwhile, the guy was chatting. Chatting on the phone during the message. You just became kind. And you guys just became friends. Only for you to realize that that, and it was a younger guy, that that is the son of the chairman of your company. And that's the chairman that's not approved your promotion. How did the Holy Ghost do that? Holy Ghost works like chess player sometimes. He will move the prawn and move the king and move the knight because he's trying to move you something. That's why he says he works in us both to will. He will just tell you, why not take this shop and put one in VI? And you think it's a thought, but it's not a thought. It's already willing through you. What happened is this. Most of us cut off the ministry of the Holy Spirit because we are not yielding to the will of the Holy Spirit. There are points in my life the Holy Ghost told me to do something. I didn't. One of the things the Holy Ghost told me to do when our church was five that would have changed everything was this. It told me when it spoke with us that we should move to planet one. The, it was too much a bill in my mind. I was thinking of buying land. It took me another seven years to understand what he had said a lot of people all of you in business he will tell you call your friend is he stupid he's not there's nobody as wise as the holy ghost in fact the holy ghost is called the wisdom of god another testimony one of our brothers in the lucky church he said i was at home and the spirit of god says go and have lunch ah in the restaurant expensive he didn't have money he said he went there he had enough money to pay, not that he didn't have money for the lunch. As he was having the lunch, on the next table was a white guy. I mean, he was minding his business. The white guy just slammed the table and said, All oh, these things just at the same bam! And he was interested and said, Sir, why are you angry? He said, My brother is the chief procurement officer for one of the largest oil companies in Nigeria, top three oil companies in Nigeria. He said, Because of that, I can't get a contract directly. I have a Nigerian partner, and this is hundreds of millions of naira. He said, But my partner is up and down. He's kept me here for two hours right now and we have issues. He said, I'm so sorry. They began to talk. As they were talking, asking, what do you do? He said, oh, I supply this. And he said, he said, that's exactly what I'm looking for. First contract, I'm not sure of the amount right now. Maybe right now, in time, maybe a hundred and something million. The brother bought a brand new tier of a car when he did that contract. Brand new. Question, why did they go to restaurant? The Holy Ghost. How many of you don't you go to call someone? You are doing pride. You are doing pride. Listen to me. Where has your pride brought you? With your pride, see your car. With your pride, see your accounts. There are many ladies here. The Holy Ghost say, Take her, sow a seed. And towards your marriage. You say, No, I'm not going to sow. They all they want is my money. Keep it. You are, you are now rich. When you cry at night, why can't you hug the money? Take the pillow and hug the money. Hug the money. Hug the money. The Holy Ghost said tight. He said, uh, don't. Some of you, the Holy Ghost said, you're in the department. He said, I don't have time. It's not, I want to ask you, how can the wise God look at you, give you guidance? He said, you don't have time. Who will lose? He said, join the department. Go to go track. He said, I don't have time. Don't have time. You will still have time. Look at Jonah. When it was time, Jonah came to do what he had to do. Because either you do the will of God or you enter office, you swallow you. Many of you have entered fishy relationship where you have been swallowed. Many of you, your business have been swallowed by fish because who told you to go there? He says, it's God that walks in us to will. Sometimes. So the next simple prayer tomorrow is saying, I'm not that kind of money person. Who are you? The Holy Ghost gave us an idea. He said, I'm not a prayer person. I'm not, I'm not a money person. Excuse me. Who are you? Describe yourself. Define your beginning. Define your end. He's not what we feel like. When you know the Holy Ghost, you will know there's no struggle. Monday to Wednesday, we are fasting and praying. In the morning, we'll pray. Watch out. Man, talk about 
Mara de Kumina Prastikala Madia. Ah! He will just let me tell you something. What is happening right now? You just take one step, bam. Next thing, 200 million entered. Ah! This is grace, oh. Grace is very powerful. All grace does <laughs> is just to come upon your labor. See, when grace comes upon your labor, your labor turns to flavor. Ah! When grace comes upon your labor, your labor turns to flavor. Because you say, ah, where were you since? When they start asking where you since, know that something has changed. There has been a location in the spirits. And most times, everybody is away from one instruction. How many times has the Holy Ghost told you to pray that you stepped off? Do you know what you lost? The thing about losing things is that you are not even aware what you lost. It's when you get to heaven, he will now show you, uh, hey, it's what you lost. But you are here right now. Why are you here? Coincident or destiny? I didn't hear you. Coincident or destiny? It's God that walks in you both to we. He will tell you, forgive your husband. You have not forgive. You have to wonder, it's only God that can quantify what you have lost. I was talking to one of the brothers. In January, when I came here for something, one of the brother, ladies, they were looking for a child. The lady just came here and said, said, Pastor, I'm sowing this seed. I said, first of all, you never need a seed to get a miracle. They said, but that's what I feel led to do. I said, that's fine. That's what you feel led to do. I prayed. The, I think the next month, everybody, next month, right? Because they, he knows the story. She got pregnant. And they've been married for how many years? Six years. She got pregnant. Then two months after, the baby was now. It was they were going to they were going to lose the baby. The husband called me, was in tears. You know, when a full grown man, successful man, is crying, he said, Pastor, I'm tired. We have now finally got him pregnant. This is the second attempt. My wife has been bleeding for days. They said the baby is gone. As he was crying, I said, I don't want to talk to you in tears. Cry and call me back. Because cry will not help us now. This is spiritual oppression. Operation is about instruction and faith, not about tears. He called. He called later. I said, is your wife there? I said, no matter what you see from today, never talk negative about the pregnancy. Every time something goes wrong, kneel down and say, Father, you never do half projects. You always complete your work. I said, you always complete your work. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, I saw him today. I said, he said, Pastor. He said, Pastor. I saw him today. He said, Pastor, all I can do is to thank you. He said, I had lost hope. Because pregnancy is in that few months of delivery. The other one I spoke to delivered last month. Baby, safe! This thing is not luck. It only takes you that consistent. Let's pray. Are you ready? What's the theme of today's service? Who knows? Sunday service or was it? The reason why is that the title was not coincidence. It was prophetic. And it's not coincidence that you're having it on the first Sunday and the first day of August. So I've come with a mandate to take it next level. Are you ready? Everybody go ahead and thank him. Thank him because all your goals have happened. Thank him because all your goals have happened. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and thank him. Everything has happened. Everything has happened. All your goals have happened. I didn't say pray for it to happen. I wanted to mention them one by one. Mention them one by one. Everything has happened. Everything has happened. Thank him. All the spiritual goals, the career goals, the ministry goals, the business goals. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, the way the Lord led me to minister, the first, before I start preaching, I miss in the Spirit with the gifts of the Spirit. At the end of the preaching, I just miss prophetically. As I declare, it's an instruction from heaven. Any 
everyone that has a pending contract, lift up your right hand. That means that you have a contract, it's not yet awarded to you it's in the process. 30 days, sir. All those contracts will come in your favor. In the name of Jesus, by the relocation of the Holy Ghost, by the transportation of the Holy Ghost, sir, I declare, move to the next level. Velisonakia. Velisonakia. Amuni Caponia. Aniku Sikai Kakatika Papa. Everyone that is delayed when it comes to marriage, by the power of the Spirit, let the power of the day be broken. Hey, everyone that needs business funding, put your right hand on your chest. Let favor change the narrative. Let help us be raised from the four corners of the globe. Let them begin to take steps towards you. This month of August, receive your testimony. I said, receive your testimony. Every pending approval, every pending contract, every pending approval, conquer. I release you in the name of Jesus. Shout, I receive it. Shout, I receive it. Shout, I receive it. Everyone that is ill in the body, whatever it is, right now the healing power of God is touching you from stomach, stomach issues to growth in the private parts to walking problems to eyesight problems to stiff bones parts of the body that cannot move in the name of the Lord Jesus I rebuke infirmity I command it be healed in Jesus name thank you Holy Father in Jesus' mighty name we pray.